And I ask kids, even today, when you go shopping, what are you going looking for? And they would talk about a lot. I said, shopping. And eventually one of those youngsters would say, Mr. Black, I'd look for the best I can buy for the cheapest price. I say, what do you think the slave traders were doing? Uh -huh. The best they could buy for the cheapest price. And then to others, you make it seem like it's a piece of trash. Uh -huh. So my students, uh, even when I was a dean out at Wright. Wright Junior College. Wright, yeah, right. Wright Junior College. I saw almost an all-white school. Mm -hmm. and uh, Northwest side. Yeah, Northwest side. The uh, same attitude. And I guess my driving force is to do a good job mm -hmm. and remove as many restraints that would keep me from doing a good job out of the way. And then come being one of those. So I've been relatively free to enjoy myself. Well, why don't we go back? There, there's one uh, loop I'd like to close off, off camera. Uh, you brought up your involvement with uh, a young Barack Obama in community organizing. And maybe, maybe you'd like to tell that story. Well, <clears throat> when he returned or came to Chicago after finishing law school, somehow or somewhere, he had heard that I knew a little bit about organizing, community organizing. Now, that was fairly true because I started when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. when we organized the uh, retail clerks in the black community, which the larger clerks union wouldn't let blacks be a part of it until they, could, they saw that <laughs> they needed us mm -hmm. uh, in that larger circle. So we, so uh, organizing, when we couldn't get jobs in the black community, even though we were paying the merchants by buying in the merchants. And uh, a fellow by the name of uh, St. Louis Kelly, J. Lever Kelly, uh, would uh, go into a grocery store and a black kid would be sweeping the floor, knock the groceries off the shelf and said, tell the kid, go punch the cash register. And we had to organize around that go punch the cash register idea rather than sweep the floor. Yeah. You can do both. But the cash register, that's where the cash is. And uh, so we began. And then during the, uh, during the uh, Big Depression, that's when I began to get the intellectuality of organizing. With, with people like Margaret Burroughs and those artists and intellectuals. Mm -hmm. they were, and we would organize the, the, the Washington Park Forum. During that period, people couldn't pay their rent. They put, put them out on the street. We'd have one of those leaders say, come on, somebody's out on the street, let's go put them back. And we kids enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. We'd, go and help put the furniture back in, in, in the house and tell the owner, if you do that, we're going to do it again, so save his time. And it was a certain kind of good feeling about that. So I had learned how to organize, uh, and, and, and the Army was kind of to my jeopardy at one time, because I was considered uh, by edict uh, uh, disturbing. Um, the, uh, let's see, I forgot where we... We're, we're heading toward Barack Obama. Oh, and yeah. And his interest in community organizing. Well, when I came out of the Army, I was part of the organizing of, in the local level, of the, uh, the, uh, the, the 
party, the uh, not the communist, but the uh, progressive progressive party right. in the local Clarice da Durham, Clarice Davis, who, Dick Durham's uh, mm -hmm. wife, who was also to the left. Now I was accused of being a, a member of the communist party, and never was, but I was close to <laughs> mm -hmm. a lot of them because they they. Uh, Express ideas that I embraced too. Uh, it kept me from being an officer when I was in the army, and uh, of course they had. And now I just fear for people today with all this new equipment that they don't have to have a person there; they can have a thing there. Mm -hmm. How much they knew about me, mm -hmm. you know, all the way back to second grade grammar school, to my teacher. So I, I among a lot of others could not go to OCS because of that background. So I had to learn how to organize even in the, in the Army. With, and then when I came out with the Progressive Party and then organizing, uh, I guess, uh, kind of best exemplified by uh, Sam Ackerman and myself organizing the Chicago contingent uh, of the March on Washington, 1963. Mm -hmm. Somehow, Barack got information I knew a little bit about organizing. When he came out, there had been some problems out in the Augell Gardens area, public housing, the uh, South Chicago Steel Mill area mm -hmm. had began to uh, deteriorate. And unrest was there. So I think, you see, Barack is a very, very sharp guy. And because, without being derogatory, he is so intensified about himself looking good mm -hmm. that he's looking for places to do his work. And so he heard that I knew a little bit about organizing and knew a few people. So he had someone that he knew that knew me to call me and ask me would I have a, would I have a meeting with him. Do you remember who that was? I've forgotten who the hell it was. Somebody. But anyhow, the uh, person did call me. It wasn't a close friend. It was just someone. Yeah. And we met uh, at uh, the uh, uh, eating place on 57, right down the street from... Uh, has a, a religious name, right down the street from Woodlawn. Right. Uh, and uh, that's when I met him. In old Hyde Park yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, and, you know, a lot of students and all that come in there and it's busy all the time. In fact, they got a sign now. This is, this is one of Barack Obama's headquarters. Right. And uh, so he told me what he had in mind. And I said, now you're new to the neighborhood. Very few people know you. So what you need to do is to get to know, in a friendly way, leadership in the neighborhood. And I began to introduce him to people in the Pullman area that I knew and who trusted me. Mm -hmm. And they began to have regular meetings among church people. So you, you got a, a captive audience. Yeah. And that's when he became friends with Reverend Wright. Then he began to go into the political. Now, I wasn't with him in the political, and I didn't realize that he was really, that was one of his goals. Was to be. Mm -hmm. So when he uh, made this agreement with Alice Palmer, those of us who had been advisors to Alice didn't know it, that she had made that agreement. Can you tell us what that agreement was? Though? That she would support him as she ran for the congressional seat in the second congressional district. Her assumption, I think, was that she would win. And that was our assumption, too. 
because she, in the beginning she had almost no opposition. But when Reverend, when, when young Jackson, Jesse Jackson Jr. came into the ring, she probably thought, and I'm almost sure, that she couldn't beat him. That's when she told her, no, that's when we said to her, keep the seat that you have. You're on all those important committees in, uh, in the state senate. You just keep what you have, and then maybe next time. That's when she let us know that she had made this agreement. Not knowing uh, Brock better now than I knew in the beginning, uh, I imagine when he heard that possibility that he went to her, offered his support to her in exchange for her support for him running as a relatively unknown. Mm -hmm. Ask all your friends, you know, how many people have known Barack 20 years? There'd be very few that have known him that long. And uh, that's what, again why I say he is a sharp guy. He doesn't waste any time. He moves casually, uh -huh. but he's thinking all the time about what he wants to do next. So uh, when he uh, when he uh, had convinced her that he wanted that seat, and we suggested we didn't know if it had been made, she stayed there, and she told us then what she had done. We said, "Well, let's call him." Well, he had begun to organize, trying to get the money as well as the folk. And uh, he had done his, he had began to do voter registration. And he did voter registration in the, uh, uh, the social arm of the you know, United Methodist Church. Right. What's the name of that black minister was in charge of that? But anyway, um, he began to do voter registration with a great deal of help from the young people in Reverend Wright's church. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he wasn't giving up that seat. Then later, after he had become senator. State senator. State senator. Yeah. Uh, he uh, called me to ask me to support him against Bobby Rush. This is for Congress now. For Congress, for, yeah. for the first congressional district, I told him I could, couldn't do that. For the same reason that I'd refused to support Bobby Rush, who wanted to run against Charlie Hay. But Bobby Rush was much better known than Barack, mm -hmm. but he'd been around as a black, as a black panther and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. As a Congress, not as a, as a um, alderman, mm -hmm. and so forth. He was angry that I wouldn't support him. And yet, when, uh, when uh, he became a candidate for the United States Senate, I was fully behind him. Uh, and he enjoyed that, which is one of the reasons I'm sure he wrote that beautiful letter. Of, and I wish I had bought a copy. You can probably pull it up on the screen or internet, I'm still primitive, I see. Right, right. But uh, uh, that loyalty to the cause rather than the person, it's easy to understand that, uh, mm. that uh, people will, will be angry. Bobby, Bobby was really mad at me for not supporting him against Charlie Hayes. Right. Well, that was a very gracious letter. Oh, yeah. Obama. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was always oh, complimentary. Mm 